morning. Welcome to Directional Bible Ministries. My name is Dwayne. This is a teaching ministry that is called to encourage, disciple, and challenge the people of God. Today is August the 11th. Uh, today we're going to pick up our study in Acts uh, chapter number 15. Acts chapter number 15. Uh, Sunday when we were together, we were able to do sex session 26. Uh, and we got down through... Acts chapter number 15, verse number 10. So just for a little context, we're going to back up, read there, and spend a little bit of time here in Acts chapter number 15 today. Um, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now understand the conflict here is that Paul was preaching the new gospel of grace that did not require the keeping of the law. Um, the Jews, of course, required the keeping of the law, as did the gospel of the kingdom require the, teach the keeping of the law. When, therefore, Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and to the elders about this question. And, of course, this question is, whether or not the Jews specifically are the converts to Judaism or the converts should have to be circumcised. That was the specific question, but the question in general was, should they have to keep the law? And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And again, I think one of the things that we fail to do today is we kind of we kind of clump all the Jews into one group, just the Jews. But there were two different groups of Jews that we're dealing here here uh, with in the book of Acts. We're dealing with believing Jews and non-believing Jews. And when I say believing Jews, I'm referring to Jews that had accepted the teaching of the gospel of the kingdom as preached by Jesus, John the Baptist, and the Twelve, and for a period of time by Paul which was the, what we call the kingdom gospel. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sin. So those were the believing Jews. And then when it talks about the unbelieving Jews, it refers to those Jews who had rejected that message. They were the ones that did not come forward at the altar call in Acts chapter number 2 at the preaching of the apostle Peter. Um, and when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received at the church and of the apostles and the elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. Now, of course, uh, Paul and Barnabas are sharing how God had brought salvation to the Gentiles. And um, this is where the problem erupted, whether or not these Gentiles needed to keep the law. In other words, as in time past, were they, the question was whether or not they had to be proselytized into Judaism by circumcision and the keeping of the law. And that was the case in time past. As a matter of fact, when Peter preached to Cornelius, and he's going to become uh, the subject front and center here in just a few verses, Cornelius was actually proselytized into The Pharisees, which believed. Now, notice there's a difference here. These guys, they believed what? They believed the teaching of the gospel of the kingdom, uh, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So, not only the believing, not only the unbelieving Jews, but even the believing Jews still believed, and rightly so, that these new converts need to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. And again, people just fail to differentiate the fact that the gospel of the kingdom was in accordance to the law. Um, it taught the law. And the apostles and the elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto the men and brethren, you know that how a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my, by, by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So, Peter is referring to 10, 11 years earlier to chapter number 10 when he went to Cornelius' house in chapter number 10. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bare them witness and gave them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. So he, he's referring back to how 
Cornelius received the Holy Spirit, and he put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So why are we trying to... Peter is, Peter is recognizing what's going on here, and he says, you know that, and if you look at the, the, the preaching of the kingdom gospel that Peter gave to Cornelius, Cornelius received the Holy Spirit prior to being baptized, which was a first. And he's saying, obviously, God was doing a new thing there. Okay, and, and why should we force them, put a yoke upon the, their neck, which neither we nor our fathers were able to bear? In other words, we're not able to keep the law. No one's able to keep the law. And he says, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Now, notice he does not say they are saved the same way we are, but he is recognizing that we are going to be, we are going to be saved the same way they are. I believe that Peter is acknowledging that there had indeed been a dispensational change, that moving forward, the Jews were going to be saved the same way the Gentiles were. Now, previously, the Gentiles were saved the same way the Jews were. But Peter is recognizing that going forward, we're going to be saved the same way they are. It seems that Peter is saying here, uh, that he, he's acknowledging that the kingdom is indeed being postponed and that this new gospel of grace is going to be the way of salvation moving forward. And that's the whole purpose of this council in Jerusalem. There is a meeting of the minds where they are coming into agreement and eventually James is going to speak up and James is going to say the exact same thing. Uh, he's going to acknowledge it. And we're going to talk about that. Now, notice in verse number 12, then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Now, after Peter's final words, and we've already talked about how these are the final words of Peter in the book of Acts. He, he moves off the scene at this point. And again, we must see the book of Acts as a book of transition. We are moving from Peter to Paul. We are moving from the kingdom to grace. We are moving from... Jerusalem to Antioch, and I've become increasingly convinced that most of the problems we have in the church today, most of the reasons of division that we have in the church today, most of the reasons for the various denominations that we have in the church today, is because we fail to see what's going on in the book of Acts. We all want to get back to Pentecost, and I'm convinced now more than ever that Pentecost is not about the church. What happened at Pentecost is not about the body of Christ. There was no body of Christ. The church was not born in Acts chapter number two, but we keep trying to go back there and it's caused nothing but confusion. Everything in Acts chapter number two was for the nation of Israel. It was the offering of a king and his kingdom. And of course, it was eventually rejected. They rejected Peter's message. They rejected Stephen's message. And chapter number nine, lo and behold, God calls Paul, who would take the gospel to the Gentiles and not the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of grace to the Gentiles. So now the multitude kept silence. They gave audience to Paul and Barnabas. So Paul and Barnabas speaks up here. And they give one more thought in regards to the work that God was doing among the Gentiles before James is going to take over the conversation beginning in verse number 13. And we'll look at that real quick. I'm, I'm determined to keep these messages 10 to 15 minutes because my Sunday morning messages are running way over an hour and I don't want that to happen. So notice in verse 13, and after they had held their peace, and after they had held their peace, who had held the peace? He's obviously referring to Peter, Paul, and Barnabas since they were the last ones to speak. In other words, he allowed them to speak. And after they had held their peace, uh, James answered. Now, this James seems to be the moderator of the meeting. Uh, he is the half-brother of Jesus. This is not to be confused with the other James who was actually killed. Uh, under Herod, this is James, the half-brother of Jesus. He answered and said, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. 
So now he is going to begin to recount what Peter had already said in regards to Cornelius. Simeon, referring to Peter, hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. So, no doubt, as we've studied through the book of Acts, we have seen that the first Gentiles to be offered salvation were Cornelius and all them which heard the word at the preaching of Peter. And we saw that in Acts 10.44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. Okay, and understand, context is key. James is not talking about Paul's ministry here. Okay, and so many Bible teachers, I see them pivot here and say, and, and kind of infer that he's talking about Peter's ministry here. He's not. He's still, I mean, he's talking about Paul's ministry. Instead, he is still focused on Peter's ministry. He is simply further elaborating on Peter in regards to the conversion of Cornelius. And he's using this, just like Peter was, as a point of reference, as a pivot point, if you will, that God is obviously doing something among the Gentiles. And we'll get into verse number 15 tomorrow. God bless you guys. Hope that you have a great day. Remember, God loves you, wants the best for you, and he's working all things out for your good.